Well, he's already the oldest person to hold the presidency, and now the Wall Street Journal news side is pulling back the curtain. It reports that in his private meetings with congressional leaders, President Biden is showing signs of decline. The journal saying in part, quote, his age and cognitive fitness have become major issues in his campaign for a second term. The White House and top aides said he remains a sharp and vigorous leader. Some who have worked with him, however, including Democrats, and some who have known him back at his time when he was vice president and senator, described a president who appears slower now, someone who has both good moments and bad ones. Let's bring in our panel, Senate Leadership Fund President Stephen Law and former Clinton advisor Mark Penn. Uh, this comes at a time when at the Time magazine also wrote a piece that posted yesterday. Biden did a long interview with them. And in it, even the reporters acknowledged that there had been a visible change. And I go back to the maxim that if you find a turtle on a fence post, it did not get there itself. These stories are coming out at a time when, Stephen, my reporting, uh, a couple people I've talked to, is that there are Democrats who are very concerned about Biden's state right now. And that's kind of a delicate topic, but it is one that is driving a lot of consternation amongst voters. So let me turn it over to you and what you think about this news report and the developments and what you've heard. Certainly, uh, President Biden's cognitive decline has been the talk of the town in D.C. for probably well near a year. Uh, Dana, you and I both know Washington's a small town. People know each other. People interact with folks and, and news gets around. And there's been a lot of conversation about uh, and concern about Biden's cognitive decline. You're also seeing it in the polls. Independents and even some Democrats in polling express concern about whether Joe Biden is still up to the job uh, mentally. And, but I'll just simply say this. I'm not a psychological expert. I can't gauge or, or diagnose the, the depth of, of whatever a cognitive decline President Biden has. But I can tell you this. He is in steep political decline, and that may be irreversible. And it's not just connected to his mental state. It's connected to an agenda that he's pushing that is very far left and is very, very unpopular with voters. Mark, let me read to you a little bit more from the Wall Street Journal. They said that uh, this is incredible to me as a former comms person that this ended up the way as ham-handed as it is. After the offices of several Democrats shared with the White House either a recording of an interview or details about what was asked, some of those lawmakers spoke to the journal a second time and once again emphasized Biden's strengths. Quote, they just, you know, said that I should give you a call back, said Gregory Meeks, a New York Democrat, referring to the White House. Bates, the White House spokesman, said, we thought it was important that all perspectives be represented to correct what he said were false and politically motivated claims. And I admire the press office. I know what they're trying to do, and I think that they are doing the best that they can with the facts that they have. But they don't have necessarily a communications problem. They have a fact problem, Mark. Well, I was chuckling when I read that about how they called back, let us set the record straight. Look, I, it was a little bit of an odd story in the Wall Street Journal because it cobbled together essentially what voters know. Look, over 60 percent of the voters are concerned that Biden is too old to be running again for another term. And I don't think that issue is going to be decided by these whisper stories. I think there's going to be a debate. They have deliberately thrown down the gauntlet for an early debate. And I think that's going to be the point at which Americans judge, is he ready for another term or not? Clearly an issue. The debate is the strategy to, to push back. Stephen, the Fox News power rankings issue tracker that we revealed yesterday here at America's Newsroom showed that when it comes to the issue of age and the concerns about it, President Trump is up over Biden by 21 points. Now, the Time magazine piece that ran yesterday, if we could pull this up, call for number two, this is what it says here, which is Time said, could you really do this job as an 85-year-old man? And Biden said, I can do it better than anybody you know. You're looking at me. I can take you, too. That kind of bravado, Stephen, how's that going to play? Yeah, I think it was an unfortunate moment. It made him look small and petty. Uh, he could have responded in a funny way. It sounded more mean and defensive. Uh, and that's kind of part of what fe feeds into this view that he's gotten too old, he, he doesn't have the patience, so that he certainly doesn't have the sense of humor and the quickness that he used to have. Uh, but again, the, the larger issue that I think he's got is not just the, the reality that people are seeing in Washington that, that people are whispering about when they're in meetings with him, but people out there in the hustings, as Mark Penn said, they're feeling it, they know it, they can see it and sense it, and at some point this is an issue they're going to have to deal with. 
Mark, just a last word to you about just the campaigning. This is crunch time. We're five months to Election Day from today, and Biden's schedule had been pretty light last weekend, and now he's on a flight to, um, and a good, one, a good trip that he's doing for America to re represent us at Normandy. But then he's got a lot of other travel and then the debate. Well, look, I, I, look, I think the campaign's starting with a deficit. We know that kind of as, as you, you know, the Memorial Day scorecard, I would say, is Trump's ahead. The administration's fighting back on immigration. You know, he's going to fight back on age with the debate. I, I think you see an active campaign doing what they can, and they're going to emphasize the strengths that he's got and the weaknesses. Look, the biggest thing in the time interview that gave me concern was what he said about Netanyahu, which I think was a real problem uh, that they need to walk uh, back. Just give us a quick synopsis then. What did he say? Uh, what he said basically was Netanyahu was keeping the war going yes. on for political purposes. Yeah, prolonging the that war. That's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was a horrible thing to say about your ally, to accuse them of, of basically wasting lives for political purposes. And I think he's got to walk that comment back from that time interview. Well, he's about to see all the world leaders uh, at the G7, so maybe we'll hear more from there. And Stephen, Mark, thank you for your time today. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmeade. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.